China is once again flexing its muscles as the ruling Communist Party holds its Congress in Beijing this week. In a keynote speech, Chinese leader Xi Jinping said he wants to build his forces into a world-class military as soon as possible, and that he wants to, quote, modernize military theory, personnel, and weapons, and enhance the military's strategic capabilities. While Xi did not mention the U.S. specifically, he made 18 references to national security. Meanwhile, the Washington Post is reporting that China is further developing its hypersonics and missile program using technology that may have been funded by U.S. taxpayers. This, as the Wall Street Journal warns, America's military may be weakening as the Pentagon struggles to find recruits. Rob, this shouldn't come as any surprise to us, frankly, yeah. because it seems as if there have been a steady stream of reports on China's quiet attempt at world dominance. We see that in their strategic partnership with Russia in the mm -hmm. Arctic Council, mm -hmm. in Central and South America, throughout countries in Africa. When do you think this administration will wake up to China's infiltration of this country and its attempt at dominance of the globe? Well, they won't wake up. Uh, and, and let's make it very clear right now. When America is in a position of weakness, and I'm sorry to say that we are right now, we have very weak leadership right now, our adversaries see this, right? So when we're on the right and we're showing, you know, photos of uh, or videos of Joe Biden stumbling over a teleprompter, just, you know, acting like an idiot, whatever. So people see that, okay? Um, so we're projecting weakness right now. And so this is what I want to say about some of the recruitment issues that are going on in the military right now. Mm -hmm. If we have talked for the past decade. We have talked about how America is awful. It is racist. It is sexist. It is white supremacist. All of our leaders were all of these things as well. So you have that. And on top of that, you have this disrespect for law enforcement and this disrespect for people that wear the uniform, whether it's military, whether it's police officers. And so when those two things come together, you're looking at a bunch of young people in this country who are saying, why would I want to serve in this country that is racist, sexist, homophobic, whatever, and also, why would I want to wear the uniform of law enforcement, whether it be a police officer or military, if I'm just going to be hated? So all of these things, I think, come together, and that's why we're having a recruiting issue. Um, the weakness that China and our adversaries see in America right now is why they are bolstering up their forces. And, and for me, it is scary. I believe in our military. I believe in the young men and women that are in our military right now. We will be strong, right? But we have to beware of the images that we're putting out in the world and how we talk about this country if we want people to put on the uniform and serve it. That's right. And let's talk about, so the images that we put out there to the rest of the world, Kaylee, what messages has it been sending when this administration dismantled the prior administration's uh, program within the Department of Justice uh, dedicated to helping to identify and enforce and prosecute Chinese infiltration in this country in a multitude of areas, including physical. Um, and then the House Speaker goes to Taiwan, and yet at a meeting with Chinese leaders, we certainly did not stand up for ourselves. There's a lot of conflicting messages that this administration has been sending, but I would say that there's been no conflict with us sending a message of anything but strength. Spot on. I mean, we have a commander in chief who's looking ice cream cones. And if you think Xi Jinping is not watching these images, these images matter. Xi Jinping is about to go on to his third five year term. He's going to be more emboldened than ever. He's built up the military. He's built up the economy. And what have we done? Uh, actions matter. To your point, the last administration, when President Trump gets elected, the first thing he does, pick up the phone, call the Taiwanese president, and a show of huge strength. Then all of a sudden, the trade war talk began. And then, as Axios points out, it took a whole of government approach and you can go read they list every action taken by the Justice Department State Department White House Defense Department DHS whole of government the entire government going with the full strength of the United States of America saying you won't mess with us China economically or militarily what's Joe Biden doing licking ice cream cones and touting the economy and going on vacation and that too. That's right. That's right. If anything, we have absolutely diluted any type of actual strength that we've had with those prior policies and commitments, but also in terms of that messaging, which is so important to someone like Xi Jinping. So what I would like to see happen here, if we're going to make a philosophical shift in this country, and I hope we do, I hope we see two types of people emerge. And the New York Times highlighted some of the candidates who are running, who were special operators and military vets, who are now running as Republicans. And they want an anti-interventionist foreign policy. These are actually some of the smartest people you could talk to about how to make our military better 
and smaller and less expensive, but more attractive if we do in fact need recruits. So these are people who've dedicated their lives to service. They have served in combat and they probably have a better handle on refining the Department of Defense from an anti-interventionist point of view. So those people are really inter interesting to me. The other people are the capitalists because what you're not hearing from China is this pro-economic message and economic growth because economic growth also means individual prosperity. You can't have individuals prospering when you have a state-run economy. So China also has a zero COVID policy. They are cracking down on civil liberties. They're boosting their military. Uh, the economy, it, it, theirs is cratering right now. So if we have the opposite from those two prongs, that is where American success and ultimately economic and global success will come from. Harris, talk to any small business owner, which I know you do frequently, and they will tell you that importing something from China is so much cheaper mm -hmm. than having it made here in America because of those bloated policies that the Democrats and this administration keep putting forward, including the overregulation. So to Kennedy's point, it's making it harder every step of the way for us to succeed and prosper while the Chinese get to move ahead. So, you know, we're calling for cultural shifts here. I, I think one that has to happen is made in America. Mm -hmm. And yes, it can be a bit more expensive, those goods. I mean, I talked to small business owners about this during the pandemic, specifically when we were having critical supply chain issues. By the way, if you need baby formula, we should be making our own at this point because it's still a problem. And we don't talk about that crisis enough. So but anyway, back to, to the main lane here. So with recruitment, it also hurts our police departments because 19 and percent of our police departments are former military. Mm -hmm. With recruitment, it's being hurt by the fact that you just saw an article out today about the heightened number of military members and veterans who are killing themselves. Mm -hmm. Suicide mm -hmm. is rising. And with recruitment, the smaller your military gets, yeah, it can be highly technological and it can do all that, but what it will become is outnumbered. Because if China decides that it wants a bigger military, which they pretty much almost have one now, but they want to modernize it, where do you think they get that intellectual property to modernize their, their military? They're going to get it from us. So we need to be big, bold, technologically gifted. We got to have the whole kit and caboodle. And don't think they're not watching what Russia's doing. And I think some of those drones are probably Chinese drones too, but they're getting them from anybody who'll sell China, the, the drones that they're hitting Ukraine with. China would love to do that to Taiwan because mm -hmm. it's a distant thing that they can do. They don't want to engage with us. They really don't. Economically, they don't really want that. But they're watching and they're seeing that we don't do anything when you hit countries with drones. That's right. And right now, they're winning. And that's the hardest problem of all.